In this video, we're going to show you how to go from this to this. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Hi, I'm Alex from DIY Composites, and in today's tutorial, we're going to go through the carbon fibre skinning process. The process is exactly as it sounds. It's taking a single ply of carbon fibre and laminating it across the surface of your component. It doesn't make the component any lighter because we're adding material. We'll make it a little bit stronger because we are adding reinforcement, but mainly it's a cosmetic process and it will give the high-end carbon fibre look that you see here. Today we'll be using our DIY carbon fibre skinning kit and walking you through the process of how you take your component from looking like this to this. In today's tutorial, we're going to be skinning this karting NASA panel, which you might recognise from sitting at the front of the cart with the driver's number here. It's worth noticing that the surface of our component is very shiny at the moment, so if we were to laminate straight onto that, getting a strong bond would be quite difficult. So the first step in the process is we need to prepare the surface by abrading it back using 120 grit paper so that the resin and the carbon fibre cloth can make a strong bond. So we've now thoroughly abraded the surface of our part with 120 grit paper. So we've got a good surface now to laminate onto and allow the cloth to bond. So it's important that we degrease the part and make sure there's no debris from the sanding process left on the top of this. So we're gonna do that with one of our alcohol wipes that was included inside the kit. We've also made our own holding device so that when we get into the laminating process and we're adding resin to the part, the resin can drop off and it won't adhere the part to the desk, which it would if it was sat on top of it. And also it allows the material, the carbon fibre cloth, to drape off the side of the job, which will make fitting it far easier. An additional option to keep the carbon fibre cloth adhered to the edges of your part is to use a cutting knife to put some deep scores into the edges of the component prior to applying your base coat and carbon fibre cloth. We're now going to apply our base coat layer. The base coat we're using today is DOI SK75B Black Epoxy Base Coat. Our component we're skinning is already black, but by using a black base coat it means if you are skinning a different colour component it minimises the bleed through of any colour through your cloth because we're using a really lightweight carbon fibre 200 gram cloth. The idea of the base coat is it provides a tacky surface which the carbon fibre cloth will adhere to and it will help you stick down the cloth and get in any tight details and shapes and make sure that the cloth doesn't come away from the component surface. So now the next step is to mix our base coat, which we're going to do as per the labels and as per the data sheet instructions. With your resin and hardener, weighed out as per the label instructions, thoroughly mix, making sure that there's no unmixed resin in the bottom or at the sides of the cup. So with our SK75B base coat resin thoroughly mixed, we're now going to apply a smooth, even layer across the surface of our component and then allow that to go to tack stage. With smooth even brush strokes, spread a layer of the resin evenly across the entire surface of the component. So with an even coat of our SK75B black base coat applied, we're now going to leave the component for an hour and a half to two and a half hours at room temperature to allow the resin to go to tack stage. This is critically important because the tack stage is what's going to hold the carbon fibre cloth to the component. So we judge tack by if we touch gently on the surface, no black pigment will come away on our finger. But if we were to push hard, we would mark the resin. So with extreme care, we're going to take our carbon fibre cloth out of the plastic container and laminate it onto the part. You get one go at this and once the cloth has hit the tacky surface, you won't be able to lift it without damaging it. So be careful and take your time. So it's really important when we laminate our carbon fibre cloth, it's only a 200 gram cloth which is extremely lightweight and it's very, very delicate to touch. So when you handle it, if you're, if you're rough, you'll see that it easily pulls apart and the weave is distorted. So 
So now that the carbon fibre cloth is successfully onto our part and tacked down really nicely, it's important that we trim back the edges to around 20 to 25 millimetres from the edge of the component and then we can tape those up and under so that when we laminate in the next stage, we can get nice edges to our part. We've now successfully laminated our carbon fibre cloth onto our component. We've taped round the edges and now we're ready to put our first layer of epoxy skinning resin on. So it's important when we mix this that we follow the mixing guidance on the labels. We've got half a kilo of resin in this kit and we have to do a number of coats. So don't use it all on the first coat. It's important that we don't saturate the cloth. All we're looking to do is just wet this out and adhere it to the tacky base coat beneath. Just as before, when we mix the SK75 base coat resin, thoroughly mix the DIY SK75 clear resin, making sure that there's no unmixed hardener or resin in the bottom or at the sides of the mixing cup. So here we're applying smooth, even coats of the SK75 skinning resin. So that's our first wet out of the carbon fibre cloth complete. You can see that we've got a nice even coverage across the part. Some of the sloping faces, don't be concerned if they're not wetting out as well as the flat surfaces because the, the resin will naturally run to the flat areas. But all we're looking to do here is get a nice bond between the base coat and this first coat. So we're now going to leave this for 14 hours overnight to cure and then come back to it tomorrow. So our part's now fully cured overnight and we can see we've got a really nice even wet out of resin across the cloth. So it's now time to abrade this back so that it's ready for later resin coating. It's important when we start using our 120 grit paper that we're not too aggressive because in certain areas, sloping faces and vertical faces, the resin won't be as thick as on the flat surfaces. So if we're too aggressive, we'll go through the resin and we'll start to distort and damage the weave beneath, which you'll see in your final component. So we've now used our 120 grit paper to abrade the surface of our wetted out cloth. It's now important that we get rid of any debris from the sanding process, degrease the part, and we're going to start the resin build phase, which we're going to do in three coats of the SK75 skinning resin. The edges that we folded over and taped back earlier, if required, can now easily be trimmed back using a rotary tool and sandpaper. This is the first of three resin build coats. Each time we'll leave the resin to the tack stage which will take around an hour and a half to two and a half hours at room temperature, just as we did with the SK75B base coat, just waiting till the surface has a gentle tack before applying the second and third coats. As you start to apply the resin coats, you may see some air bubbles inside the resin that have been entrapped from the mixing process. These can easily be expelled with the use of a hairdryer or low temperature heat gun which can be used gently on the surface of the component. Make sure not to overheat the resin. So we've now built up our three resin coat layers and the part's really starting to shine. But we've now got to flat back any high spots in it. So we're going to start with 120 grit paper and work our way just removing all the big lumps and bumps and then work our way to a 240 grit so that we're ready to put the final resin coating on. Slowly working around the part, looking for any lumps and bumps and using your 120 grit paper to bring it to a smooth finish before moving to 240 grit paper so that we're ready for our final resin application. We need to make sure that when we finish sanding with the 120 grit and the 240 grit paper that we thoroughly degrease the part and get rid of any debris from the sanding process. We've now sanded our component back to a smooth finish using 120 grit paper followed by a 240 grit paper. So any lumps and bumps are now gone. So we're ready to put our final resin coat onto the component. Before that though, we're gonna use an alcohol wipe to degrease the surface thoroughly and then mix our SK75 skinning resin and paint a thin coat on the surface, ready for our final finish. So with our final resin coat now on, the part's really starting to come alive. So we're going to leave it overnight now for 14 hours to fully cure before we give it its final surface finish. So our component's been left overnight and has now come to full cure and it's really starting to shine. But it's now time to give it its final flat and polish. We're going to start using a wet sand and a 500 grit paper and work our way through to a 1000 grit paper. You could go as far as 1500 grit, but we're only going to use 1000 because the NW1 cutting compound is so effective, it will bring it to a lovely shine. 
Ensure between each change of paper that you wipe the component clear and refresh the water so that there's no debris from the previous paper left over. We're now here with the component after its final polish and the results are outstanding. We're delighted with what we've achieved with our DIY SK75 skinning resin and skinning kit. We hope you've enjoyed our video and stay tuned for more tutorials. All of the materials used in this video are available online on our website diycomposites.co.uk Don't forget to like and subscribe to stay up to date with our latest composite tutorials.